Hi guys! We have built, and calibrated the odometry module. This is what mine looks like, it's a different one to the one that I made in the previous video however, the components are connected in the same way. The only difference is how the interconnections are routed. This is what the top of the board looks like, the components are labeled on the picture. This is the back of the board with the components and interconnections labeled. To start with we will make the bottom board, this is what we're going to concentrate on for now. We will add the battery charger, switch, LED, resistor and battery. Then we will connect these components together and to the interboard connector. Once we have done this we will build the top board. This is a battery charger. You can get two types, this type that does not have battery protection built in. The type that is shown on the schematic has battery protection. These work in the same way however, the other type has dedicated battery terminals. With this type we have shared battery and output terminals. I will solder wire to the output of the battery charging module and solder it to the perf board. Once this is done I will secure it in place with hot glue. This module will get hot and by soldering it to the perf board we will stop it from moving or coming off. I will add the battery next and hot glue it to the perf board. This battery has built in protection to stop it from being charged or discharged too quickly. Some batteries do not have this built-in protection. This battery is ideal for our needs as it has a low C rating. It is rated at 1C which means that we can draw 2 amps from this battery. Batteries with a high C rating are not suitable for this application. This is where the battery connects to the charging module. This is the output of the module. Remember if you have the other type then yours will be connected differently. This is where the battery is soldered to the perf board. The observant of you would have noticed that I have connected the battery's terminals incorrectly. Don't worry I will fix this later. Now we will add the switch. To secure the switch I soldered it onto some headers. I will then solder these headers onto the perf board. Now the switch has been added can you see that I shorted two of the pins together. All we need to do now is add the LED and resistor then connect everything together. I'm looking for a suitable place to add the LED here. It doesn't matter too much where the components are placed as long as they are connected in accordance with the schematic. The only critical component on this board is the interboard connector as this needs to line up with the top board. I'm doing the same with the resistor, looking for a suitable place to put it where it can be connected easily. Bingo, this looks like the ideal place. A 
it's time to connect these together. Here you can see the switch that is connected to the positive side of the battery via the charging module. You can also see the LED and resistor. The LED is connected to the resistor however the resistor is not connected to the negative side of the battery. We will do this next and connect the other side of the switch to the interboard connector. As I mentioned earlier, I connected the battery incorrectly. Now we are going to fix this error. All we need to do here is swap the positive and negative wires. This is the negative wire correctly connected. Here I'm repositioning the positive wire. Hey presto that's the error fixed, a robot wouldn't have made that mistake. To finish off the board, I will add the other side of the power switch to the battery voltage pin of the inner board connector. Here you can see how the board is connected, I have labeled various parts to make it clear. Ensure that your board matches mine. That's the bottom board completed now it's time to build the top board. Now we have finished the bottom board let's build the top board. This is what we are going to build. As you can see we have the other side of the interboard connector. This is connected to the DC to DC converter and to the 5 pin connector JP1. JP1 will carry 5 volts in ground to the odometry module. It will also carry data from the odometry module and battery sense line to the Arduino. The DC to DC converter will convert our battery voltage to 12 volts. This will be passed to the robot via the JST connector. The robot will use 12 volts. To power its motors in the linear regulator will convert this 12 volts to 5 volts for the Arduino and the sensor boards to use. This is the bottom side of the top board. I have already soldered the interboard connector, LED, JP1, capacitor and resistor to the board. This is the top of the board with the components labeled. I have also labeled JP1 so you can see the pin allocations. I will connect the amber LED to the 5 volt and ground lines via the 470 ohm resistor. This will illuminate when 5 volts is present on the board. This 5 volts is used to power the TCRT 5000 sensors in the odometry module. The regulator ground is used by the battery voltage sense circuit by having a 3.3 microfarad capacitor between the battery sense line and the regulated ground. This will ensure that the voltage reading is smooth and does not fluctuate when load on the battery is increased or decreased. I'm going to ensure that everything lines up properly by plugging the top board into the bottom board. Now I will connect the 5 volts and regulator ground to the interboard connector for use with the odometry module. This is a diode from the schematic end, this is part of the smoothing circuit. I will add this next. The battery sense line will go through the diode and smooth by the capacitor. The diode will act as a one-way valve enabling the capacitor to smooth the battery sense line. If this was not done the battery voltage readings would be all over the place. This decouples the battery sense line from the load of the battery. Because we have done this we will need to add a bias to the voltage readings to get them to be accurate. This will be done in software later on. 
I will now use hot glue to glue to DC to DC converter to the perf board. Next I am going to attach the battery voltage line and battery ground to the input of the DC to DC converter. When the top board is attached to the bottom board and the bottom board is switched on, battery voltage will go to this DC to DC converter and be converted to 12 volts. We will now connect the output of this converter to a female JST connector that will be plugged into the robot. I will attach the JST connector to the perf board and, use the copper wire to make the connection. At the end of the video I will use hot glue to stick the wires to the perf board giving the connection some extra support. This is the last wire from the DC to DC converter. Once this battery board is built we will have to set the output voltage to 12 volts. By default these converters are set to around 24 volts which is too much for MIPPER's motors to handle. All we need to do now is to connect the remaining 4 pins on the inner board connector. I will first connect the left and right odometry sensor output to JP1. JP1 will then be connected to MIPPER through the auxiliary connector. Once we start to use sensor boards I will add a breakout on each sensor board for this connection. Once we have done that we will connect the 5 volt, and regulate the ground pins to the correct components. The 5 volt pin will be connected to the anode end of the diode and, the regulated ground pin will be connected to the ground pin of JP1. This is what the finished top board will look like. I will use the standoffs to attach the battery board and the I will then connect the power connector in JP1. I have already set my DC to DC converter to 12 volts however, if yours is set to 24 volts the LED could start to flash or the board will turn on then off. Don't worry if this happens, it's happened because your DC to DC converter is drawing too much current and, the battery protection circuit has kicked in. All you need to do is set the output to 12 volts. I will demonstrate this in the next video. Now the battery board is finished we can create some sensor boards that will make the robot do useful things. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time where we will build a light seeking and avoiding sensor board.